Good morning. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is replacing uh, some vacuum parts, uh, hoses and uh, vacuum uh, reservoir. Uh, I'd, I hadn't planned on making a video of this, uh, however, because I figured, oh, I'll just find my little vacuum leak and uh, see what the problem is. But as it turns out, it's a bit bigger job than I expected, isn't it always? And so what we're doing is, uh, obviously I'm already into the job uh, before I started filming, so you don't see the very beginning. I'll just explain what I'm doing. Um, I pulled off one of these vacuum hoses uh, and uh, I uh, used my uh, vacuum pump, okay, a standard vacuum pump like this, uh, and uh, to see what, if, if the system would hold vacuum. It did not hold vacuum. Uh, after having attached and reattached a few of these things, it ended up, I found out that this thing down here, this is the vacuum reservoir, and uh, I needed, it, it was defective, it's not working properly, it's not holding a vacuum. So I went and bought a new one, and we'll be putting that in. The other thing that I, because I, I'm testing components as I take them out, the other thing I noticed is the check valve, this is the black and white check valve that looks like this. This, in my case, sometimes it's down in the line, one of these lines here. In my case, it hooks in here and hook directly into the uh, this uh, uh, rubber collar uh, that hooks the plenum onto the onto the um, uh, manifold, the uh, intake manifold. Uh, and it was not holding vacuum either. It wouldn't. It was. I tried test it on both ends. One end, it's one end is supposed to go straight through with no problem, the air, and the other end it shouldn't it should hold vacuum and mine didn't. So I replaced that. This this part is actually surprisingly expensive. I figured it'd be like eight bucks. It turned out to be here in Canada sixty sixty dollars or something like that. Ridiculous. So I called up Porsche and I said, okay I'll order my um, order the vacuum and uh, this is this is the vacuum reservoir. This is the new one. Okay. And uh, and the little check valve. So I buttoned the thing back up, saying, "Okay, uh, I, it was running fine, and uh, I'll button it back up. I know I could, it would run even with that small vacuum leak." Well, of course, the thing is, I turned the key. The first thing that happened was kabing, kabang, kaboom. Thing wouldn't even run. Ah, what on earth has happened? I said. And so uh, I started looking around, finding, trying to figure out why it was doing such a horrible job of running. Well, in fact, it wouldn't run. And uh, what did I find? So what I found was this. You will probably recognize this as being the tube that runs from the AOS into the throttle body. And uh, as you can see, this one is perfectly snapped off. And uh, of course, that's what happened when you try and work on your own car and with these old brittle plastic parts and uh, it broke so I had to order another one of those too. It, it wasn't too expensive surprisingly enough of the three pieces that I picked up at Porsche the other day the vacuum uh, reservoir was like $37 Canadian I think it was like really cheap uh, the, the the hose was I don't remember how much and of course as I said the uh, the check valve was was like the most expensive part on the list that even this parts guy was really surprised now the problem, as you've probably noticed, is that the placement of that uh, reservoir is down underneath the um, the intake manifold, and uh, so is not very accessible. Apparently, there's two ways of going about it: either we re remove the intake manifold, or we remove the alternator, and we can go in that way. Well, of course, I said, "Oh, I'll just take off the intake manifold," which uh, you know I've done before and everything. So, uh, and actually, I'm in the process of doing that, and I've taken, I've removed the the ball, the bolts in the, the fuel rail to pull the fuel rail back with the, uh, as well, along with the um, injectors down there. They just pop out once you've got taken that out, uh, the bolts out. The other thing is that there's six bolts that hold the intake manifold to the. Uh, to the, the motor and uh, of course one of the bolts is right behind I don't know if you can see this down here but there's a hose here and this goes to the back of the AOS and it goes up and it goes 
right through the middle of this thing. So in order to, in order to take this out, I have to unclip one end or the other. I do not want to break that hose. And of course, it's made in the same old brittle plastic as everything else. The other thing, of course, is that one of the bolts for the intake manifold is hidden underneath that hose. So the only way I could see to get it, and I tried, the only way I could see to get it was to actually remove the, uh, the alternator. I've already taken the alternator out, and uh, you can see here, it's pretty interesting. Actually, you probably could remove all that stuff uh, from, um, from this point from the uh, taking off the firewall panel and uh, going through this way, which would probably be, have been easier. However, I did that after having removed the manifold already. Well, the manifold is already unbolted. You see there, here, over here, if you can see that, here's the, uh, where the bolts are. And the ones that I couldn't get is with the one that was underneath that hose, that, that uh, corrugated hose that you see there. Um, so now, anyway, I guess I've got the best of both worlds, or the worst, whatever, however, depending on how you look at it. So as you can see here, I've pulled the manifold out. Um, it's always fun doing things like that. Uh, getting at the bolts, etc., etc., and having to uh, remove, and uh, there's always things uh, in the way. And of course, I broke something else. It was the... Uh, the tube that goes from the back of the AOS, which is down here, uh, and goes all around here underneath the fuel rail, threaded through the manifold, down there underneath all of this stuff, uh, I don't know if I can't remember if it was over or under, over there and then underneath, the, um, underneath this other manifold over here, and then back over underneath the brake booster, uh, down and down in that section down there and um, oh what a hell of a job it was getting it out I'm sure I'm not looking forward to putting the new one back in so this is the tube that uh, that broke obviously in in two places so down here it's down in here where I put my hand you can get your hand right down in there you can see where we are here uh, and there over here is the cable so you have to push it in feed it in through underneath the manifold here find the, the small opening push it through wiggle 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 and then push it down and then we snapped it into place okay this is the end that is extremely difficult to put into position but you can reach it from above and push down and then I got in here with the long screwdriver and wedged it into place, pushed it into place, levering off of the firewall a bit. So we'll continue buttoning up. Uh, I've got my alternator to put back in and uh, the uh, um, secondary air uh, pump to put back in here. And that's, and then I'll put the rest of it together uh, as usual with the, the plenums and the throttle body, etc. that you've seen in uh, one of my other videos. Okay, so mission accomplished. We got it done. It was, uh, <laughs> it didn't quite go the way I thought it would go, you know, start it up, vroom, vroom. No, uh, it turned out that I had a massive air leak. Uh, <laughs> the car wouldn't even run again. You know, I said, oh no, it seems to me this is why I fixed it, right? Anyway, uh, it turns out, I finally found it. It took me quite a while. I had to, I took it, parts of it apart again and say what was wrong, but it was a big air leak. So I, it was, the only thing I could think of that would create a big air leak like that would be one of the rubber collars, the collars that go between the plenum and the, uh, the manifold. And, uh, and in fact, this is exactly what it was. The, um, uh, when I put the, the collar on, there's uh, it. What happened is the underside got folded up, got folded up because because they were quite warm and it was a very I was working out in the sun at that point and they were quite warm and so that made them nice and stretchy, which made it nice to work with. But the thing is, it got folded up there and I tightened the clamp down and and I bought and bought new clamps. I used a T clamp on one. I had a, one of the T clamps that I had, which are really good strong clamps, 
and still the air leaks there. I said, what's going on? The re how I found the, where the air leak was, was I took um, a spray, uh, what do you call it, starter fluid. You know, so, you know, you, when the, you have a problem in your old, your old Chevy and you're trying to find, a, trying to get a starter in the wintertime. Well, this spray starter liquid uh, is great for finding uh, vacuum leaks. If uh, all you have to do is just get, get if you can get the motor running, you um, you just spray the various areas where you think that it might be, and this will uh, when it, when you hit an area that has a vacuum leak, of course, in starter fluid. So what will happen is the it, that will get sucked into the engine, and the engine will accelerate. So you'll get, you know, it'll be going boom, 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 and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, go like this. Say ah, there's a there's a vacuum leak. So, uh, thanks for being with me, and uh, I hope you'll stay tuned for my upcoming videos. We've got uh, uh, a new uh, first day at the track video, not for me, uh, obviously, but uh, for those people who are just like, oh, I'd like to go on the track. I've never been on a track, but I'm a little worried about it. I don't know what to expect, and that sort of thing. Well, I'm going to be putting together a small video about that. Uh, this is, uh, you know, with the Porsche Club, because, of course... You know, this is the Boxster channel. And uh, the other thing that's coming up, of course, oh, yes, this is going to be fun. This week, uh, I'm going uh, into one of the local shops, uh, EK Performance, and I'm getting a tune done on the car. Uh, as you know, those of you who followed me, that I have a, the Porsche um, anniversary, the 2004 anniversary tune on it at the moment, which mm, is, uh, you know, I guess it maybe it added something I don't know but uh, this tune is supposed to give me an extra little boost so I'm really looking forward to see how this a performs on the track and B maybe I'll finally get back to that dyno and see what happens okay so see you next time ciao If you've enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button and leave any comments below.